Okay, cool. Good question. So what does the 14R that so basically all it means is um your stop of of course on every trade will vary, right? It will be, you know, some trades you can get in with like a six or seven pip stop. Um other trades will require a 20 pip stop or uh, obviously it um uh depends on uh what charts you're trading and also what time frame you're trading, you know. So I, I'm using one minute a lot, so I can take trades which have like seven pip stops and six pip stops and things like that. Like for example, in the all day live trading last week, we took a really nice trade on EuroCAD and I can't remember the other one. Was it EuroUSD? Um, and both of those were, I think seven pips, um, something like that. Right. So that the pips itself don't mean anything. What we do is we assume that every trade you take, the risk is the same. So whether you are taking a 20 pip stop or whether you're taking a 10 pip stop or a seven pip stop or whatever, you're risking the same amount. Okay. So this obviously won't apply for you right now um, because you're trading very, very small, but as, as you progress um, and as you kind of move forward and, you know, as, as you, as you learn and I kind of move you up in terms of trade size and things like that, one of the things we'll do is I'll start getting you to, trade on a fixed risk amount so that means basically so let's say you decide that i want you you know you risk 10 pounds a trade for example right so whether your stop is 20 pips 10 pips 7 pips your risk is going to be 10 pounds so that effectively means your risk is minus 1r yeah so whatever your risk is that's that's equi equivalent to one one unit okay so then if you then bank, if your risk is 10 pips and you bank 30, then that means you've banked three R, which is three times your risk. So for example, yesterday, if you had taken, you know, a 10 pound risk on each trade or 20 pound or a 50 pound, whatever it is, as long as your risk was the same, then the trades that we looked at, so GBP USD, which was what, roughly 10 to one, uh, GPCHF was roughly 10 to one and EuroCAD was roughly, well, was, I think GPCHF was more, right? 14 to one or, I can't remember, one of them was like 14 to one, something like that. But even if you'd got half of all three of those, like let's just say you got, you know, five R on each one. So for risking 10 pounds on each trade, you would have banked 15 R, which means, 150 pounds right so 15 times what one unit of risk is does that make sense so that is the correct way to really note your progress now as you're if you're early on in your journey um i'll just ask you to trade 0.01 while you're kind of learning and developing so it's not really an issue for those of you who have just started out recently for those of you who are more advanced, that's going to be the next step or that's something I've already asked you to do. Um, and that's focusing on, um, you know, calculating your trade size as per the uh, fixed level of, of risk you want to um, take on the trade, which is important. So, for example, if you're taking 1% risk or 2% risk per trade, um, then then you have a fixed dollar amount, a fixed pound sterling amount, a fixed euro amount that you want to risk per trade. Um, so then you just simply adjust your trade size. Okay. But this is also a good way to measure in terms of your statistics because you can see um, real progress and how it's made. Because obviously if you're, if you take a euro USD trade, you may get in with like a six or a seven pip stop and you could bank a three to one at 21 pips. But on Euro Aussie dollar, you could take a 30 pip stop, bank 30 pips. And on the, on, if you're using pips alone, it looks like you're banking more pips on Euro Aussie dollar. But actually in terms of a risk to reward perspective, Euro USD is much more attractive, right? Because you've banked three to one on that and only one to one on Euro, US, Euro Aussie dollar. So again, if you're measuring, if you're taking a trade using the same level of risk, per instrument regardless of sub size then euro usd you'd be making more money okay